as promised in our previous video, we are now to the point where we can construct the confidence interval estimate of the mean difference, mu d. We're going to show the formula, substitution, and result. So remember, we have this data set with the wetsuits and the no wetsuits, and the differences, the d's, are right here. So those are the d's, the differences. So we want to construct an interval from those values. All right, well, if we look at the formula right here, it's d bar plus or minus t alpha over 2 times the standard error of d bar, which is d bar plus or minus t alpha over 2 times sd over the square root of n. So our formula step is right there. So we're going to say formula d bar plus or minus t alpha over 2 times sd over the square root of n. Now we need to be able to find d bar and sd in order to do the substitution step, as well as t alpha over 2. All right, well, d bar and sd and n, n I know is 12 actually, so that's the one part I actually know already. But if I want to find d bar and sd, I want to run one variable statistics on those differences. Now I can do that with the calculator. So I can say, clear that out, stat, edit, Oh, I found those differences in L3, so then stat, calculate, number one, one variable stat, on second three, L3. And I can go down to calculate and press enter, and there's D bar right there at the top, 0 0.0775. I'll leave some space for the T, I've got to figure that out. But I know the S is the standard deviation, which is 0 0.02179 divided by the square root of my n, which was 12. So I can get those out of the calculator. I can also get them out of StatCrunch, if you're working with StatCrunch instead. So I have those differences right here, because remember, I already ran, I, already, I cheated and already did the test, and excuse me, did the confidence interval. But when I did that, it came up with the differences. So now I can actually run stat, summary stat, columns, on those differences. So I want to I want to scroll down. The first differences is the one for that before and after problem. So I want the wetsuit differences, which is down here after the wetsuits. So make sure you click on the correct one because it's just going to name them differences. It doesn't number them or anything. And we want the n, the mean, and the standard deviation because that's s. Click compute and there we have the same values that we had when we did it in the calculator. 0 0.0775 0 0.02179 and 12. Now to get the t value, we also have to remember that we have a 95% confidence. Now in StatCrunch, we can go to Stat, Calculators, T, because it's T alpha over 2. I would click on the between, and then my degrees of freedom is n minus 1. So since n was 12, that's 11 for this one. And my error, or excuse me, my area is 0.95 because it was a 95% confidence level. So I can see that it's 2.201 right there. Now in the calculator, you can get that from second distribution, inverse t, and you have to do the, the tail area. You have to do alpha over 2. So let me just remind everybody here. Since your C level is 0.95, alpha is 0.05. So alpha over 2, which is what the formula tells you to use, is 0 0.025. And my degrees of freedom is, of course, 11. So I can grab the 0 0.025 and 11 here, go down to paste and press enter, and then press enter. I could also grab it out of my t table on my student's t distribution table. I would look at the 0 0.025 column because that's the area in my tail, that's alpha over 2, and I would go down to 11 for my degrees of freedom, and it's 2.201. So one way or another, whichever way you like, you, can have, you have to get that it's 2.201. So if you're using the table or the calculator, you need these pieces. right? If you're using StatCrunch, you actually don't need any of this. StatCrunch, all you need is the degrees of freedom is 11. And for stat crunch, you go to um, stat calculators and you choose T right there and then go from there. 
All right, so either way you want to do it, table, calculator, stack crunch, whatever way makes you happy, right? Figure out how to find that T value. That's the hardest part about this problem, is reminding yourself how to do that piece. Now for the result, I actually already have the result in stack crunch because I already ran this interval. I can run it again though. So I would go to stat, T stat, paired, my sample one was wetsuit, my sample two was no wetsuit. I don't need to save the differences this time because I've already saved them. I mean, you can do it again, it'll just save them again in another column, but I don't need it. So I'm gonna go to confidence interval, 0.95, and I feel like having some extra info, so I'm gonna click on some of these things, but it's not necessary, it's not required or anything. So I click compute, and you can see there's three pages of results. The confidence interval itself is right here. It's the lower limit and the upper limit. And if I click on some of these pages, I can see there's the confidence interval picture, which I'm going to need. And if I let my mouse hover over it, you can see different values in it, like the mean, 0 0.0775, the lower and the upper and so on. And then this is the QQ plot that we used on the previous page. So we've already done this a couple times, I know, but it's, it's good to remind yourself. All right, so going back, the result is right there, 0 0.0637 and 0 0.0914 or 1347. If I grab the calculator, I can get the same results, but I have to do it from stat tests t interval, which is number eight. So you can just press the number eight for t interval. And I'm gonna do it from data. My data, remember, is an L3, but I want a 95%. So 0 0.95, or actually you can just type 95 and say enter. And I will get the same result that I got from StatCrunch, which is 0 0.06365 and 0 0.09135. There we have that. Now for some review. <laughs> all right, so the point estimate and the margin of error and all that good stuff. So let me remind you that when you build your interval from 0 0.06365 to 0 0.09135, your point estimate is right here in the middle. Okay. Which in our case is D bar. D bar is our point estimate. You know, that looks a little weird. I'm going to write it over here. Okay, so D bar is my point estimate. It says so in the formula box. It tells you right in there that your point estimate is D bar right here, which we already found because it's right there. <laughs> That's D bar, 0 0.0775. So D bar is 0 0.0775. That is the middle of our interval. My bar got a little weird there. So T bar, right here, that's D bar, 0 0.0775. It's the middle of your interval. Now the margin of error is the distance from that middle out to the edge. So your error is right here, your margin of error, or right here. Error is half the width of the interval. It's this piece right here. This is the error. So you can calculate it. I mean, you can just type 2.201 times 0.02179 divided by the square root of 12. That's correct. All right, that's the margin of error. Or you can get it from that formula we've had before, which is you, if you take your upper limit minus your lower limit and divide by 2. So that would be 0 0.09135 minus... 0 0.06365 and divide by 2. And I'm going to grab uh, Desmos because Desmos does this stuff really nicely. I'm just going to push that up so we can see it more easily. All right, so if I press the division bar right away, then it makes a fraction, which is nice. So 0 0.09135 minus 0 0.06365. 365 and divide it by 2. And just to prove to you, it's the same thing. Let me let me actually find it the other way. 2.201 times 0 0.02179 divided by the square root of 12. 
Look at that. 0 0.01385, more or less. Right? So either way, it's 0 0.01385. That's your margin of error. If you're on a calculator, please don't forget to use parentheses. That's the one scary thing. So if you're here, you have to do 0 0.09135, unless you're going to use the fractional print method where it looks like a fraction in the way that Desmos did. But if you're not gonna do that, then you have to do parentheses. That's the one mistake that's really common for students to make. All right, now for interpreting the confidence interval, of course, we've seen this formula before. That formula right there was in section 9.1, and so is the interpreting the confidence interval part. That was also taught in section 9.1, and we've just used it over and over. We are 95% confident that the true average difference, remember, because it's about mu d, that's what you're building an interval for. So this interval is for mu d, the mean difference, right? So that the true average difference, the true mu d, in swimmers top speeds because remember what that's what this was this was the peak speed they ever reached in meters per second so their maximum velocity their maximum speed true difference in swimmers maximum velocities um, from sweatsuit to no from wetsuit to no wetsuit I guess I could say between Let me just write it this way, wetsuit versus no wetsuit is between 0 0.06365 meters per second and 0 0.09135 meters per second. Now, does this confidence interval suggest there is a significant difference in swimmer velocities? And the answer is, oh yes, 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 it does. For one thing, I mean, if we look at it, all of these differences were positive. That means they were always faster with the wetsuit than without, no matter what. That's kind of a sign that there's something going on. There's a reason these are banned, right? So let me just remind you, so recall, the null hypothesis, the thing we assume is that the difference is zero. So it's assumed no change, right? That's what we would always assume. Now, does this interval suggest there's a difference? Oh yes, right? So does this interval con um, confidence interval suggest there's a significant difference? So yes, um, the interval suggests a significant difference because zero is not in the interval. That no change, that no difference, it's not in there. Zero, that assumed value right here, zero, is over here. So if you look at your confidence interval, this is not to scale, but here's zero. Zero is not part of the interval. So that means that there is a significant difference because zero is not in there. If there wasn't a significant difference, zero would be in the interval. To, sh to show a significant difference for the interval um, from UD, um, zero should not be um, or must not be in the interval. vice versa, right? If zero is in the interval, that implies that there's no significant difference.
just as it was in section 11.1. That is always holding true for all of chapter 11. It's always about whether zero is in the interval or zero is not in the interval. So if zero is not in the interval, that's implying a significant difference. They're different, zero is not in there. If they, if zero is in there, then they're not different. Just like it was in section 11.1.